Hi everyone, I'm glad you made it to the session in this very unusual room. Uh, I'm glad I added uh, some animation against all odds so we can uh, not use the laser pointer on both sides. Um, so my name is Marc Schlesser and I'm uh, working for the research center in Jülich in Germany and uh, this talk is about the embedded device for simultaneous recording and stimulation for retina implant research. So I'll first give you a short overview of what we will see in the next 12 minutes. I'll give you a brief introduction about the working principle of the retina and uh, the idea of a next generation retina implant. That's what the biologist told us. And uh, we will uh, show you or do this or we did this with our former uh, uh, shown uh, acquisition platform that's called iNote that was shown in the IEEE uh, conference before. And uh, it will have a recording front end and a stimulator and I'll show you some few results that we gained and uh, the further steps we're going to do. So first of all, and now I'm missing already the laser pointer, this, uh, this is a retina, uh, the schematic of a retina. So the unusual thing about it is that the light goes uh, right further we're thinking of how it would work. So at the very bottom we, we can see the rod and the cones, uh, the photoresistor cells. And uh, if you think of uh, the lens that would be above the ceiling and the light would come through, it goes through all the different layers. So there's the ganglion cells on top, there's the horizontal cells, many other cells, bipolar cells, and down to the uh, rods and cones. And then the signal goes up towards the, uh, the ganglion cells and then it goes to, to the brain and so on. So uh, there might be some degenerations uh, that uh, common retina implants are used for, but common retina implants stimulate single cell layers like uh, the inner cell layers or retinal layer and they're coping degeneration of outer layers, uh, for example, for the photoreceptor cells. Uh, next generation retinal implants shall cope degeneration of all the different retinal layers. And therefore, we need to understand uh, the information processing of all retinal layers, of course. And therefore, we need to record intra-retinal network activity in vitro. And uh, for this, uh, we should have a bidirectional communication approach to stimulate either bipolar cell and to record simultaneously the ganglion cells activity. So this would be a draft of the next generation retina implant. So we would stimulate, for example, the bipolar cells that would sit right above the blue and red uh, 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 photoreceptor cells. And we would stimulate that region with an electrode. So the right thing is the uh, multi-electrode and MIA array. And um, so when stimulating the bipolar cells, they would send a signal uh, to the top to, towards the ganglion cells, so we have a spike train going up. And then we would try to record simultaneously the reaction with a multiplexer, for example, or a multi-electrode uh, recorder at the ganglion cells, and then send these signals or record them in the DAQ system with this hybrid front end. We would do a little real-time signal processing and then uh, adapt the stimulation pattern and sending it back to the bipolar cells, and so on. So this is the closed loop. Uh, and now we would repeat this and with optimized simulation pattern. So this is what the biologist would start with, looking at the, the retina, at the Petri dish, and uh, there's an electrode, the real size, you can just imagine. And uh, when we have a closer look, we'll see the rat's eye taking off. Uh, the lens would be cut it away and the biologist takes out a small piece of the retina and uh, then cuts a very small slice and then put it underneath, uh, I think it's a dental floss, just to keep it flat on the surface, the special surface. And when we even have a closer look, we will see the electrodes, the standard electrodes from Neuronexus. And uh, if, we, if we wouldn't have uh, like a bumper-like uh, or rubber-like surface, we could have get in flat or around here. But it's uh, not the case. As you can see, it's like putting a tree into a slice of butter. Uh, uh, and this approach didn't work well. So we designed a custom made, or we let design a new uh, kind of electrodes with four shanks, uh, even smaller, different size. And uh, then we approached or we made it into the tissue. And um, as you can see, there's a blood vessel in, in the background. and. Uh, Biologist found, found its way into the retina and found some signals. So we took a golden standard 
system from Tucker Data Technologies, and uh, this is what we got. Well, we had some issues for the stimulation purpose. The problem is that uh, Tucker Davis, uh, uh, when as soon as the simulator is turned on, that uh, that there is some serious noise which we, we can't handle. So uh, um, so we were either sending or receiving, recording or whatever. So the mode change between stimulation and measurement was mandatory. Um, and then we had during shifting, we had some serious uh, switching artifacts that would cause our amplifier to go into saturation. And then the, you can see the, the stimulation pulses afterwards, and uh, uh, this would cause all, all the time uh, the, the recording device to go into saturation again. And uh, therefore, we need a new approach. Probably, Kama was not doing the, the, the common grounding was not doing well, but we had so many tries and we couldn't figure out to make it better. So there was a new concept. Uh, we tried, and well, we thought about why not taking our microcontroller system and do the electrical simulation recording with it. So the specifications would be, or the, the, the advantages, is that we have an embedded device that's independent and uh, it would work on a battery, low power, and therefore would be electrically insulated. Uh, we had wireless control. I know that picture got in, but uh, it here. So we have uh, differential uh, signal recording locally, right where the retina sits and the electro goes into the retina. Uh, and therefore, with that we had a 16-channel electro, we needed a 16-channel multiplexer. And uh, of course, we would like to have an automatic stimulation pattern, and therefore we uh, needed uh, four stimulation outputs with on and off capability just to save energy. Now, here's the uh, DAQ platform that we are using for uh, several years now. We have some sensors on uh, top. We already implemented many uh, sensor platforms or front end with ECG, EGMG, and uh, all the standard uh, uh, sensor front ends. The gyros and uh, intelligent uh, sensors. And then uh, after we have some signal conditioning providing different voltages and we have uh, the, the central intelligence. We use, we're using a Texas instrument MSP430 for low power, ALT for low power. And uh, we have flash memory on the back side. We can replace this uh, to an uh, SD card, a micro SD card, so it's very flexible. And uh, like on the bottom, of, of this picture, we can see the wireless uh, unit, and actually, we're using a, a, a IEEE 802 15.4 standard device from the uh, chip pump. Now it's sex instrument. So now let's go back. So on top, again, back to the top, uh, we, we we designed a new front end, a new sensor front end, and it would look like this. It's a first prototype, and uh, this is a recording front end side. We have a multi-channel amplifier chip with analog output. Uh, that would mean it's, uh, we took an intan uh, device, it's a proprietary on-chip high-speed analog multiplexer with uh, 16 differential inputs and an integrated uh, amplifier array, or many amplifier arrays. And it can be flexible combined with any ADC. So we took the uh, MSP430 12-bit ADC, the internal one, and uh, uh, attached it to it. And uh, the interesting thing about this chip is that it has an in vitro electrode impedance measurement that can be very useful. So if you flip the board, um, we, we put there the simulator front end, or the simulator part, and we have two times two independent simulation outputs, and that's because we only have two DACs on the microcontroller, uh, but we split the channels uh, so we can use it on many uh, outputs. And uh, with the simple voltage to current converter, we, we just can't be simple, um, uh, but you can see down there the draft of the schematic. Uh, we have uh, 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 an output, or we can inject one microamp here by, by uh, uh, an output of one volt, for example. So, but it's totally flexible, but the biologist said uh, one microamp here to 10 microamp here would be okay for the beginning. Um, the accumulated charge that might be get into the tissue uh, is bypassed through a parallel resistance. So and this is the first measurements we got for the simultaneous recording stimulation on each channel, so one channel uh, representing. So you see four stimuli or four, four stimulation pulses, the red ones on top, and you still, or you can still see the action potentials going through. There's no settling time for recording after stimulation pulse because we don't need to switch. 
um, there's no saturation effect. There's an immediate cell response, and the uh, action potentials are still visible. Uh, and the noise, signal to noise ratio is pretty good. Uh, we didn't uh, put this into numbers, but as you can see, it's uh, a few different. So uh, here's what the biologists saw. Um, you can see the uh, on the left, oh, right, 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 the pointer here, right, this here. Um, you can see normal cell activity, and then uh, there's a one second lasting stimulation train, the 400 hertz and uh, specific pulse form. And right afterward, uh, afterwards, you can see a, a, a higher event rate. So the ganglia cells are responding. Or, or like processing signals from coming from from uh, from the bipolar cells, and this also works for 800 hertz uh, um, stimulation pulses. So here you can see the higher event rate. Let's go have a closer look where that was. So again, this picture. So we are stimulating down the bipolar cells, and they would get the cell response recorded in the ganglion cell, close to the ganglion cell. This was proved by electrochemical whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm not into the biology, biology thing. So uh, we added some chemicals, and then the cells didn't respond anymore. And then there was the negative test, and so on. So the interesting part is when when we added some some light pulses, which you can also do with uh, the photoreceptor cells, then it would look like this. So there's normal cell activity, and as soon as we turn on the light, a few times you get more cell. Uh, reaction. So the electrical stimulation imitates the effect of photoreceptor cells. That's what the biologists say. Uh, next step would be uh, they would like to do the real time signal processing for feedback stimulation. Therefore, we need the digital uh, derivative from uh, from that intent internship, and it also has an internal 16 bit ADC, so uh, the precision would be uh, much better. And what the biologists would love to have is uh, an analog MEM switching matrix. And uh, I haven't seen that yet. 16 times 16 channel. Uh, and uh, we already transferred the system to different applications, but we would like to, to use it in a different application with uh, vagus nerve stimulation. And uh, for more information, I'd like to invite you to the open post session tomorrow at 2 p.m. for the embedded DAQ system for sensor evaluation, mobile or targeting application of research and education. So, uh, I'd like to thank the DFG, the German Research Foundation, which uh, found part of this project, and this is the two teams or institutions and uh, research center working on it. I'd like to thank you. Thank you for your presentation.